It's happened again. The Ethereum network has forked with the Istanbul network upgrade that just rolled out. So what does that mean for you if you hold Ethereum, if you mine it, or if you're a developer, right? Are you gonna get free money? Do you need to upgrade your mining rig? Is all your code gonna break? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So make sure you stick around to the end to find out, all right? So as always, this is not financial advice. This is for educational purposes only. And so, hey, if you're new around here, I'm Gregory from Dapp University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain developer. So if that's something that you're interested in, click the like button down below and click subscribe. And you don't have to be a developer in order to watch this video. This is for educational purposes to let you know what's happening with the Ethereum network with this upgrade. So first, let's talk about what a hard fork is and why it matters. Well, a hard fork is really just a network upgrade. You know, Ethereum is a blockchain network and it's gone through multiple upgrades in the past. Ethereum is really famous for the DAO hard fork, which happened after the infamous DAO hack, where Ethereum split off into two blockchains. All right, and that's why we have Ethereum Classic today as well as Ethereum. And that's what most people think about when they hear hard fork. They think about a split in the road, you know, a fork where, you know, something goes one direction and something else goes a different direction. You know, in the case of the DAO uh, hack, it was Ethereum going off into one direction and Ethereum Classic staying behind and maintaining a copy of the old blockchain. And whenever this happened, you know, it resulted in two different blockchains and also two different cryptocurrencies. And so basically, like if you held uh, Ether or Ethereum's cryptocurrency before that happened, you would have gotten free coins after this fork because there have been two blockchains and two records of how much money you hold. So is that going to happen again? Well, like I said, the DAO hard fork is a very famous uh, fork in Ethereum's history, but it's not the only one, right? There have been several Ethereum forks in the past uh, and also attempted forks that never happened. So the Istanbul hard fork that just happened was previously attempted earlier this year. I actually made some videos about that. You might've seen them floating around on YouTube, but it was delayed and it wasn't finalized till just now. All right. So this network upgrade is a part of Ethereum's bigger vision of realizing Ethereum 2.0, all right, which is gonna take Ethereum out of this prototyping phase and turning it into a next generation blockchain that's going to be ready for prime time. It's gonna support faster transaction speeds, scalability, and so much more. And Ethereum 2.0 is scheduled to launch next year in 2020. And at the time we record this video, that's just around the corner. So 2020 is gonna be a huge year for blockchain technology. And this is really perfect timing if you wanna become a blockchain developer because I'm launching my blockchain accelerator uh, on January 29th, 2020, which is gonna be a way for you to fast track your way to becoming an in-demand blockchain developer just in time for Ethereum 2.0. And when Ethereum 2.0 comes along, it's going to be a major fork. But until then, you know, it's going to have these smaller forks along the way. They're going to be these incremental upgrades. And that's exactly what uh, Istanbul is. That's what just happened. Okay. So, you know, what has changed since the network forked? You know, has it split off into two chains? Is it going to split off into two chains? So my answer is, I don't think so. All right. So this is just a small upgrade. I don't see a lot of resistance to this. So full disclosure, nobody knows the future, uh, despite what they might tell you on YouTube or TV or Twitter or anywhere. Uh, this is just my opinion. This is not financial advice. Um, but I don't think it's going to. And so are you going to get free coins? Like, will you get double cryptocurrency from this fork? I don't think so either, just for that same reason, right? Like if it doesn't split off into two chains, there's no reason why you get free cryptocurrency for doing this, all right? So if you are a miner, do you need to do anything? I would highly recommend updating your Ethereum client to the latest version to support this network upgrade and take advantage of all the features, okay? So the good news is we're not on Ethereum 2.0 yet if you're a miner. Uh, I guess that's good news for you because uh, when we move to Ethereum 2.0, Ethereum's gonna move away from proof of work, which supports mining, to proof of stake, um, where people will stake their Ether uh, to validate transactions on the network instead of mining uh, coins like they do right now. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that now. Uh, you should still be able to mine Ethereum as long as you uh, update your client right now. So next, if you're a developer, uh, is all your code gonna break, right? Like what if you have smart contracts deployed to the network? Uh, so short answer is I don't think so because this is planned to be a backwards compatible network upgrade. 
you know, this is a very complex topic, so I can't you know, promise you anything, but I would not worry if I were a developer and my contracts were on the network at this time. All right, so for all the developers watching, I'm actually gonna take this conversation a little further and do a deeper dive into this network upgrade. So you don't have to be a developer to continue watching the rest of this video if you're interested in the technical aspects of this network upgrade. Uh, feel free to uh, stick around, but just to give you a heads up, I'm gonna pull some uh, information up on my screen and we're gonna kind of go through it and talk about the technical aspects of this upgrade. So this is an Ethereum wiki that outlines this network upgrade in detail. All right, I highly recommend just browsing this site if you wanna learn more about Ethereum, how it works. Uh, but we can see the roadmap for all of Ethereum's forks here, including the Istanbul hard fork, which I've been talking about in this video, okay? So um, you can see the philosophy, some of the high main points, uh, some of the more detailed um, explanations of what's happening in the fork and also like the block number, the timeline, et cetera, et cetera, all right? So I'm gonna go over all these in detail for the developers who are watching. So like I said previously in this video, you know, this philosophy uh, outlined here says that Ethereum is working towards more incremental forks like Istanbul to avoid, you know, doing, you know, bigger hard forks that just make too many changes all at once, right? That's what it talks about right here. So some of the main things the network upgrade's going to bring are uh, <laughs> this first one. So align the costs of opcodes with their computational costs and improve denial of service attack resilience, all right? So that's a lot of big, scary words. Uh, but really, simply what that means is it tries to make it more computationally efficient uh, to, like, execute smart contracts, all right? So there's uh, a much deeper explanation, which you can read if you want to browse through these proposals down here. So if you see these numbers, you know, EIP-152, uh, that stands for Ethereum Improvement Proposal, all right? So basically, what that means is uh, somebody writes up a document that says, hey, Here's how I want to improve the Ethereum network. And they submit it on a website like GitHub, so we can actually just link through to one of these, right? And uh, they write the document, and then everyone votes on whether they think this EIP or improvement proposal should you know, be included in a network upgrade, all right? Um, so here's an example of that, all right? You can go browse through this list if you want to. So another uh, point is that it makes layer two solutions based on snarks and starks more performant. So what does that mean? Well, layer two refers to other technologies that are built on top of the main Ethereum blockchain that help scalability, usability of the blockchain itself. We talk about Ethereum as a blockchain being a layer one solution uh, where we, you know, store smart contracts and all the transactions that determine, you know, how, how much cryptocurrency people own. That's layer one. Well, layer two um, are other solutions that help complement what layer one does, make it faster and, and give features that layer one doesn't have. So an example of snarks um, is this idea of like zero knowledge proof or ZK snarks, okay? So I've got some videos on my channel if you wanna watch that, but basically the whole idea is that you can uh, prove somebody's identity without knowing uh, information about them, really specific information. You just prove that they are the person doing something. So. Zero knowledge proofs are a way to implement privacy in Ethereum. And uh, right now that's kind of on layer two solutions. Okay. And, and this is talking about making them uh, more performant. Okay. So another one is enabling Ethereum and Zcash to interoperate. So Zcash is a different blockchain than Ethereum that's based on uh, privacy and private transactions. You can go check more about Zcash if you want to, but the whole idea with this is that uh, they can actually talk to one another and uh, you know take advantage of each blockchain. And that's a really big deal. And so this last point is allow contracts to introduce more creative functions. Uh, I'm not 100% sure actually what that means. We could just browse through some of these EIPs to try to get a, um, a real in-depth look at what that actually means, but hey, there you go. <laughs> so also if you scroll down, you can see uh, the block number where the uh, hard fork has happened. So I'll tell you what that means. So essentially, you know, the blockchain is made up of, you know, these bundles of records called blocks, which are chained together to make up the blockchain. And each block that contains all the transaction data has a number assigned to it, all right? You know, starting from the Genesis block all the way to whatever the block is, the latest block that we have now, all right? So you can check that out on a website like etherscan.io. You can see uh, the latest blocks. So you can see like, you know, 
9084929 is the latest block here. So this number right here is the tentative block number for the Istanbul Fork. And I guess we could go verify that to see where it happened. I'm sure somebody's got a tweet out there on Twitter where we could hunt that information down and verify it for sure. Um, but that's the whole idea. You, you plan forks based on block numbers and you sort of project in the future based on the current uh, transaction speed, transaction volume. We're probably going to reach that... Um, block number by X date. That's how they forecast these uh, forks in the future. But in the case of Istanbul, it's already happened. Um, so we can probably go look up and verify what the block number is. I just don't have it sitting right here in front of me while I'm making this video. All right, so those are all the technical details for the developers who are watching this video. All right, so if you're a developer, if you've been watching this channel for a while or you're just new to this channel and you want to become a developer, whatever your situation is, if blockchain development interests you in any way, um, you need to stay tuned because I'm launching my blockchain accelerator on January 29th, 2020. This is going to fast track your way to becoming an in-demand blockchain developer. And I've got a link down below so that you can sign up about this, uh, get some updates before it happens and also participate in this special launch event. And like I said, 2020 is going to be a huge year for blockchain technology. Uh, this is, you know, this is coming out just in time for the new year, just in time for, you know, ETH 2.0 rolling out. So many amazing things happening. So uh, like I said, click the link down below, sign up, get the updates. Um, and, you know, until then, subscribe to the channel, wait for the videos to come out and be talking about this a lot more. I want your feedback, I want your input because I want to create this for you. Uh, everyone who wants to become a blockchain developer, I want you to tell me what you want and inside this accelerator, all right? So again, hope you all liked the video. Uh, click the like button down below, click subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.